Hi, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. This is Christina Liu. I am an executive coach and life coach. I'm joined here with Raf Adams, also a coach. Hi, Hi, Raf. And today we thought we would talk about a topic that I actually posted on LinkedIn, and it's a podcast that I listened to last week um, with Tony Robbins and the editor of chief of LinkedIn, as well as a expert on the future of work, also an entrepreneur, Alicia Abate. And I thought that article and the podcast was really interesting, where um, Abate um, talked about, you know, what are the trends of the future of work? And she said, the trend, one thing that really struck me the most is we're moving from a ladder career to a mosaic career. So what that means is a ladder career is you're climbing up the ladder. You go into a company, let's say you start out in finance and you move up from an associate uh, to a senior associate and then to a director, et cetera. And you do this for 40 years of your career. Whereas now our career trend is moving towards a mosaic, which is, you know, you can move laterally. You can maybe go from finance to marketing and then to sales to try different things. And, um, and I, I thought that was really interesting. And it's also, she's saying, you know, instead of looking at, you know, what are, what is the skill that I have and what's the job that I can do? She says, why not ask yourself, you know, what are my values? What are my passions? What's the impact I want to create in this world? And use that as a guidance towards what is the work that I want to do. And I, I love how that really connects when I think about, you know, the topic that we talk about, which is Sudan Monk. And I thought that really aligns with the, the concept of what we talk about, you know, um, going deep into your inner monk, you know, asking what your inner self, your true self wants to do, you know, looking at your passions, your values, you know, the impact that you want to create. So, so that's, that's one thing that really struck me. Um, any reflections from you, Raf? Yeah, absolutely. Because I think, you know, the article is very valuable, especially because we live in such changing world today that almost nothing is certain. So we don't know even if we have the jobs that we have today, if we're going to have them tomorrow. So we need to be ready, first of all, in terms of mindset that we need to be ready for that change. Because imagine right now you have the coronavirus in China. This is impacting a lot of businesses. This is bringing forward a lot of changes in the world. And I think as well, at the end of the day, the journey of life is the journey towards your own self-realization. Mm -hmm. And to realize yourself, your, let's say your experience in life is very important. And if you can find out your passion, which, which, which comes often from your biggest pains, if you can, mm -hmm. and your values, if you can build a career out of that one, let's say, your career is going to evolve and it's going to change. I see that in my own journey as well. I, I started teaching in China um, and then the groups have changed. Before it was just individuals in, 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 in Shanghai in group setting. Later on, they became companies. Then I started working with universities. Then my life journey brought me to Spain. Now I'm doing it in Spanish. Wow. So the, the passion sometimes remains the same, but the way you apply it changes. That's why sometimes it's good for two or three years or somebody can be four or five years to, to implement your passion in a certain way, but then also have the courage to make changes because your life changes, yeah. your flow changes, wow. you meet different people, you have different opportunities. And, you know, and so, you know, you change in the process. Mm -hmm. So you need to change a little bit in the way together with, with the flow of life. And as you say, follow your values, uh, make decisions based on your intuition. But then of course, uh, apply them into the real world to make sure that you can also make money out of it and if it's a sustainable. So mm -hmm. that's how you align your internal and, and external self. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, you know, that's, I love what you said. And uh, what I'm hearing is you got to be adaptable. You know, you, you got to connect with who you really are, your values, your passions, but at the same time, adapt to the outside world. And as yeah. long as what you do still aligns with who you really are and that's okay to adapt and that's also what uh, abate says in this podcast she says you know you have to and she says actually 34 percent of americans are already doing some form of freelance work and that number right is expected to increase to 45% in the next few years. So people are already starting to 
to do that, to instead of, you know, going this ladder career, they are already starting to adapt to what else is out there that I can do to that is aligned with my values and that will create the most impact in the world. And, uh, you know, you gave your own example, Raf, and I, I have mine as well. You know, for, for me, I was in the corporate world for a long time. I thought moving up the ladder was the way to go. But I always kind of knew that my inner self wasn't asking for that. You know, that's why I actually moved to a lot of different functions. You know, I started out in audit. And then I, after business school, then I worked in actually system implementation. And then I did some business, more business related strategy, marketing, you know, product management, and then moved into business improvement. So I knew that was my, my, interest my inner monk shall we say was kind of calling me to do that and now i'm a coach i also study psychology and then within coaching you know i and when i ask myself you know what is it that i really want to do in this lifetime or create in this world is i want to help people to develop mm -hmm. to get to, in touch with their true self to unleash their potential so how do i do that one is through coaching and then the other is I have a lodge and retreat center in Peru. And, and, you know, on the surface, it may seem not related, but to me, it's actually very complimentary because in the retreat center, I help people to get in touch with themselves and to use right. plant medicine to further develop themselves and transform themselves and truly unleash their potential. And uh, do I know whether this is what I'm going to do in the next five years? I don't know. But for now, it feels good. <laughs> and you also talk about, you know, follow your intuition. Um, that's what I do. It, it feels really good. It feels like this is what the universe is asking me to do at this point. And, right. uh, and that's what I'm doing. And I keep flowing as well. I also use the outside information to help me adapt to what I need to do. Awesome. So what you're saying is basically the, the turning point for you. Was it exactly when you were pursuing first your corporate career, but then you started listening to your internal self that you realized like, hey, I need to make a change because it's not in alignment. Is that, is that what you're saying? Was that like turning point? Absolutely. And um, thanks for asking. And you also talk about, you know, sometimes your biggest pain can turn into a blessing in disguise or the best thing that ever happened to you and you can even turn it into a career and for me actually that was the case you know i was at a point this was four and a half five years ago when i was in a relationship where i wasn't sure and um so that was a lot of pain for me and also my career i thought oh, yeah this is a good job but why am i not 100 percent happy so I asked a lot of questions. It was kind of a painful process for me to, you know, the self-doubt about myself and, and really asking what is wrong with me, like constantly for a long time. And then I said, you know what, I, I got to get to the bottom of this. Um, I actually went to an intuitive reader to hope that some new information can come. <laughs> and then that led me to study psychology because I said, I want to understand myself better. Um, and so that kind of started my journey onto becoming a coach and um, doing a remote year last year, some of you might know, and, um, and now right. having this lodge and retreat center. So nice. you know, that kind of a painful period of several months, uh, yeah, that actually, you know, now I look back, I'm so thankful for that boyfriend, first of all, and um, also thankful for what life has given me to be able to propel me to this journey that I'm on now. Right. Because you probably use all of that experience to help your clients, right? Because you've been through the process. Absolutely. That too. Yes, yes. That, and I actually wrote about that experience um, in my um, doctorate um, dissertation about what is transformative learning. And to me, you know, anytime you have one of those big experiences that makes you feel kind of really bad or doubt yourself, those are opportunities for a transformative learning experience where you can go from here to jump to some over here um, right. only if you're willing and able to do that reflection and to do something with it you can you know i think that's key if you have one of those big experiences and just say oh that's just you know that's my bad luck i'm you know it's someone else's fault or you know like you don't do anything with it you don't reflect you're not going to get the lesson right what do you so think? if we look at the mosaic board, it's like you've been already at different pieces on the mosaic board on your journey, no? 
Yeah, yeah, I have. But, you know, my life is, I still think that it's quite early. And uh, I think there's probably <laughs> a lot more things to come. <laughs> and cool. you too, Raf. So, yeah, so what you're saying is basically first is like, um, what I took away from what you said is first to have the awareness. First awareness, like, hey, what I'm doing is not working. Then have the courage also to listen to your internal self. And then manage your your belief system. Oh, am I good enough? Can I really do this? And really break through all of that to to basically liberate yourself. No. Yeah, absolutely. Beautiful. Yeah. So, and you help people in that process. Let's say if people are stuck in their career or they're not quite sure what is the next step, you help them in transition to that next phase. Or? Yes, yes, that's one of my focus areas, and I partner with a startup company called Going Flex that is um, actually helping people towards this future of work to provide people flexible work and flexible hiring and nice. um another and my other clientele is just simply professionals um first-time leaders a lot of times um, entrepreneurs who um, basically want to unleash their potential even more mm -hmm. become better individuals as well as become better leaders nice and Very i know you do that as well raf that's right. Yes. So I wrote a book uh, called The Suited Monk, which is translated now in Chinese, in Spanish, and also in, uh, in English. Mm -hmm. So the book is available online on Amazon.com. And as well as a coach, um, I help people find their true path in life. So to really identify what is their passion, what are their values, what are their biggest pain points, and where do they want to go? Because there is a lot of uncertainty and doubt often in that process. I'm not sure, is this the right decision that I should be taking? So mm. it's really to give people that courage to get them in touch with their emotions, as you said earlier, and, and, and help them on that path. So if people would like to get in touch with me, um, you could go to uh, Instagram, Suited Monk Official, or go to the website, www.suitedmonk.com, and then you can reach out for, you know, for more information or for the book or for coaching. And how do people get in touch with you, Christina? Uh, yeah, you can get in touch with me on Facebook. My name is Coach K. Liu on Instagram. It's also Coach K. Liu. And I have a website, www.christinaliu.com. Thank you all so much for joining us today. And uh, thank, thank you, you, Raf, for this very engaging and enlightening thank conversation. You. And, and if you have thoughts or comments, leave them below. Yes, yes. We would love to hear them, uh, especially, yeah. um, as well as suggestions for future topics. Cool. And we'll see you in the next video. Yes. Thank you. All right. everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.